Hi, my name is Tony Sicoria, an orthopedic surgeon, and I've had an interesting experience in my life. In 1994, I was 42 years old, and I was at a party, which was a communal birthday party for my wife's family, because there were five or six people that had birthdays in August of that year in 1994, and it was easy to have one party to get everybody. On that particular day, we were in a place called Athens, New York, and we were at a lake called Sleepy Hollow Lake, which is somewhat of an ominous name just from the history of the legends of Sleepy Hollow. At any rate, I was assigned the duty of running the grill, and I was outside doing that. It was a beautiful summer day. The sky was clear, and I was doing my job. As the day wore on, my mom was not there, and so I decided I would go call her on the phone and just to check on her. And I was not paying attention to the fact that the sky had grown dark and a big cloud had formed over the lake. But I was busy, so I was oblivious to it. And I walked around the front of the building and uh, we had rented a pavilion and the front of the building was a payphone. So I, I walked around to the front of the building and I picked up the phone and I dialed my mom and she was busy and didn't answer the phone and I after it rang five or six times I decided well I'll just hang up and try again later and as I started to take the phone away from my face I heard a huge crack and this big flash of light came out of the phone and hit me in the face and I knew exactly what had happened there had been a, a storm that had come up and a bolt of lightning had come out of and come down and hit the building and came out through the phone and hit me in the face and just threw me back like a rag doll. And as I was flying backwards from the impact, I had a very strange sensation of moving forward. And I was very confused because it, I thought that's really a strange thing to happen. And then I was standing there and I'm looking around and I looked to the front and there's the phone dangling. And I looked to my right and there's a staircase going up to the second floor. And I just cannot comprehend what is going on because I knew exactly what had happened. There was no lapse of any thought or memory. And now everything was different and it didn't make any sense. And right at that second, I hear my mother-in-law screaming at the top of the stairs and she comes flying down the stairs and she's running right at me. And I'm thinking, this can't be good. But it was like she didn't see who, where I was. I'm standing right in front of her and she comes running down the stairs and she doesn't acknowledge that I'm standing there and she just takes off to her left. And I thought, okay, well, I'm going to go follow her. So I turned and I started walking toward where she was going and I was confronted with myself. I was totally shocked. And I see my body is on the ground and there's all these people that are standing around it. And I'm walking over toward the body and I realize, oh my God, I'm dead. And I thought, you know, I was kind of disappointed because I thought, well, it must be some sort of thing that would happen when you die that, you know, bells go off or whistles or something, but there was nothing. It was just one second I was standing there in front of the phone and the next I was flying backwards and then I had that strange sensation of moving forwards, which I'm assuming was me leaving my body. And now I'm confronted with the fact that the shell is on the ground, but my consciousness is with me. And that's a critical thing to realize because as I was standing there, I'm having these racing thoughts and I realized that, oh my God, I'm conscious. I'm the consciousness of that empty shell on the ground. And I realized that whoever I am, I always am. There's no break in consciousness. There's no such thing as dying. Yeah, we die, but we don't cease. We continue and the consciousness continues on. As I'm standing there and I'm, I'm watching, I'm trying to call out to them, but nobody can hear me or see me. And I thought, well, this is pretty strange. And there was a lady standing behind me waiting to use the phone. So she was probably five yards behind me. And she and her daughter uh, were standing there. Her daughter was 12, 13 years old. And she was waiting to use the phone because she wanted to call one of her friends. 
her mom was sitting there with her. Her turns out her mom was a nurse and she started I saw her starting to get down to do CPR. And at that point, I thought, well, nobody can hear me, nobody can see me, and I feel stupid just standing here. So for some reason, I turned and started to go up to the second floor because I wanted to see my family. And as I started walking up the stairs, it was very strange because I normally will look down at the ground to see where the stairs are so I don't trip and fall on my face. And as I got to about the third step, I noticed that something was happening to my legs. The form was starting to dissolve. And I thought, whoa, this is really getting out of hand here. And I continued walking up the stairs. And by the time I got up to the top of the stairs, I had no form at all. And I was just a ball of energy. And at that point, the stairs go off to the left. And I didn't bother. I just went right through the wall. And I came out on the other side of the wall, directly over my wife's head. And she was sitting on a chair and she was painting children's faces because there were a bunch of kids there and they were all little. And I looked down at her and I looked at my kids and I just got the intuition that they would be fine. And I just kept going. It was like I was on a conveyor belt that I had no control over. And so I passed diagonally through the room. And when I went through the roof was when things really started to get interesting because I, it was like I had immediately fallen into a river of pure positive energy. And it was this bright bluish white light that just pervaded from what seemed like a source that was some distance away, but it, it just radiated into everything. And it reminded me of when I was a child, I would swim in a creek that had a, a deep area and this crystal clear water. And I would lay down on the bottom and look up at the sun and it, the sun would come through the water and the rays would have this sparkly kind of appearance to it. And it reminded me of that. But what was so striking about this light was that if you could imagine absolute love and peace, that was what was the only thing that was in this energy. And I call it an energy because I could not only see the energy coming, but I could feel it and I could actually see the energy form, which was really strange because I, I'm looking at it and I could see that that energy was what made everything. I'm, I was looking at trees and hillside and could see the lines of energy. And it was almost like a sine wave that was a, a low frequency vibration that was running through everything. And and I thought, well, this must be the God energy. This must be what makes everything. And it was stunningly nothing but love and peace. And I don't think I could describe it any other way. And I thought this was the greatest thing that could ever happen to somebody to experience this. And as I was floating in this, this river of pure positive energy, I had a kind of a flashback of previous high and low points in my life. It was almost like a collage. It wasn't anything in detail. It was just flashes of a picture of this and picture of that. And there was just a certain knowing that came with the picture, similar to what you would see now. You look at a picture and, you know, a thousand words come with it. I'd become ecstatic about where I was going because this was really an amazing trip. I knew that I was going someplace because it, it had speed and direction. It was taking me someplace. I had no idea where I was going, but at that point, I didn't care either. I was just so overwhelmed with how wonderful it was. And as I was going along and I'd reached the point where I was just absolutely ecstatic with where I was going and what was happening, and then it was like somebody flipped a switch and suddenly I was back in my body and I, I remember screaming out, you know, to myself because I was still unconscious, you know, please don't make me do this. I, I don't want to go back. And I was really angry because number one, it hurt like hell. I, you know, I went from absolute bliss to nothing but pain where this thing had hit me in the face, left a burn on my mouth and a burn on my foot where it went out. Those things really hurt. And it seemed like it took, you know, many minutes before I was able to open my eyes and, and to even regain conscious. And when I did, I looked and, and there was this nurse lady who was sitting, kneeling next to me. And I wanted to thank her for saving my life. But all that came out was, it's OK, I'm a doctor. And she just kind of laughed and said, well, you weren't a minute ago. And I felt so stupid for having said that. I said, OK. 
uh, the circuits aren't working too well, so I'm just going to shut up. And at that point, you know, the police came and they wanted to take me in an ambulance. And I said, no way, I'm not going to sit in the hospital for hours just to have somebody tell me, yeah, you got struck by lightning and then you're alive. So I wasn't thinking very clearly either at that point because I should have gone, but I didn't. I did have them take me home, and I, as we were going home, I called my cardiologist and my neurologist and asked them to take a look at me, and so everybody did, and they all said the same thing, you know, you're lucky to be alive, and, and that's just the way it is. 